You must decide how many sutures you will place in the lesion. Typically, a 2 millimeter punch biopsy requires 0 to 1 stitch. A 3 millimeter punch biopsy requires 1 stitch. A 4 millimeter punch biopsy requires 2 stitches. A 5 millimeter biopsy requires 2 stitches. And a 6 millimeter biopsy requires 3 stitches. For odd numbers of stitches, the first stitch goes in the center of the defect. For even numbers of stitches, i.e. two stitches, divide the defect into thirds, such that stitches will go at the one-third and two-thirds mark from either end. Okay, now I'm just going to put this in front here for a second. You have two flavors of stitches you can use. Just go back a bit. Uh, and so, so you can see both of them. Uh, you can use a, a larger needle or a smaller needle. In this case, um, you know, it's, it's kind of arbitrary. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to use a larger needle so that people can see what's going on. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. And uh, the, way you grab, the way you grab the needle, okay, is this is already set perfectly in position. So I just open the needle, I open the needle holder, the needle driver. I put this on and I, I click it into position. Now you'll notice the needle driver, can you see these, these, teeth. not teeth, but no, 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 like here. Okay, so they're notches here, teeth or whatever, and they click into place. One, and then in order to open it, I put pressure this way and pressure that way, so it it unlocks. It unlocks. You see, I'm putting the pressure there, and it opens. And then I click it back down or and push out, and it unlocks. Okay, so you don't need to push out very hard. You just need to push out just enough so it flips open. You can even hear it. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna grab this. Okay, and now I have my now now I have my needle. Now for this wound, and you're gonna be repeating some of this stuff, but for this wound I have to decide which way I'm gonna close it, and there's no real natural kind of direction here, so it's a little arbitrary uh, how I'm going to do it, but I'm probably going to, I'm going to do it this way. So this is a six millimeter punch biopsy, and if, uh, you can put three stitches, one in the middle, and then one here, and one here. So I, I just, you just have to divide it, it depends on, if it's an even number, you divide it into thirds, if it's an odd number, you put the middle stitch right in the middle, and then you go in the middle of the left half and the middle of the right half, okay? Oh, well, yeah, um, read, the, read the hemostasis stuff. Frequent blotting of blood is key to facilitate requisite visualization of the area to be sutured. If hemostasis is an issue at the onset, often there is an area around the biopsy site that you can continuously press to stop the bleeding, so, i.e. the feeder vessel. Right, so I could press here or here. It's not bleeding at all, so um, it's kind of irrelevant, this whole section. Uh, well, anyway, um, yeah, we'll, we'll have to... We'll do it on a bloodier, uh, we, we can read this on a bloodier um, procedure, so let's do loading the, loading the needle. Yeah. The needle is typically fixed in the wrapper or is dangling just outside of the wrapper. Secure the needle with the needle driver without touching the needle with your hand. Try to secure it towards the needle point. Readjust the needle by grabbing the blunt end okay. with the left index and thumb. Okay, so check it out, there's a sharp, can you see this very close up? Yeah. Okay, there's a sharp end here and a blunt end here. I want to, if I need to handle the needle, I grab it by the blunt end, okay, the needle driver is in between my fingers and the point, always, and I can put it wherever I want on the needle, you want it two-thirds the way down, okay. Now some people, some people will um, go ahead and grab the needle this way and adjust. Now that's bad because I'm going to stick myself here. So you know, you grab it, you always handle it from the end, okay, go ahead. Grab the needle beyond your thumb and index with the needle driver such that it now comes between your thumb and index and the needle point. The needle driver should rest two-thirds away from the needle tip. It is okay to hold the needle driver with your fingers through the loops, as done with scissors. Some disagree, noting that there is greater okay, so, to twist so, uh, the needle. Okay, so hold on. So first things first. I grab the needle and listen carefully. You hear that click? Two clicks is good because you know it's really clamped down on the needle. If you try to put a suture and it's not, it's, not, um, it's not clamped down, so the, the needle sometimes will slip and you, know, that's, you lose control of the needle. So, 
now I'm not touching the needle because it's, it's live, so I'm trying to do it just here. Now I grab it and adjust. Now, some people, some surgeons say to hold the needle driver in, in the palm, okay, where uh, the palm is, where the needle driver is flush with the palm, your index finger is guiding the needle, and if you look at my wrist, my wrist is completely flush with my arm, and if I twist my arm, okay, pronate and supinate, whatever, uh, the needle is going to go a certain way. If I, if I have my fingers in the hole, uh, some people, the tendency is now to um, kind of bend my wrist instead of twist my arm. And when you bend your wrist, uh, you can sometimes bend the needle. So uh, it's better, um, but if you hold it in your fingers, but still keep your wrist, uh, you know, straight and still pronate and supinate while your fingers are in the hole, uh, you can have the same action holding it this way as you do holding it with fingers in the hole. The beauty of having the fingers in the hole is when I'm ready to take it out, when I'm ready to take the stitch out, I can, I can undo the thing, grab the stitch, hand it to myself, grab the stitch again, and I don't have to constantly, I don't have to constantly be like um, turning it. Now, kind of negotiate, here, come from this side. Oh, what this? Like, look at my finger that, like, f stand behind me. So yeah, I don't have to negotiate going from here to getting my fingers back in the hole, then grabbing it, you know. It's, so it's much better to just have, have my fingers in the hole all the time. Okay, go ahead. It is okay to hold the needle driver with your fingers through the loops as done with scissors, as we just talked about. So right. Keep... Yeah, yeah, just read Some it Some disagree, noting that there is a greater tendency to twist the needle and thereby bending it when it is halfway through the skin. Those dissenters say you should hold the loops in your palm, placing your index finger on the suture holders near the needle, such that your index finger points in the direction parallel to the tangent of the needle's midpoint convexity. As such, they say you should push the needle through using the index finger rather than twist it through using the wrist. If you have the discipline to push the needle by displacing your entire arm towards the defect and not to twist and bend the needle while holding it with fingers in the loops, you can hold it in the loops. The advantage of holding it in the loops is that you need not constantly fiddle with the needle driver, putting your fingers in and out of the loop every time you need to grab and release the needle. Suturing technique. Yes. A wound will often have a natural skin line along which to close. That is, if the wound appears as an oval, the suture should go parallel to the short axis of the oval. If the wound is a perfect circle, try moving the area with flexion or extension to see if the wound deforms into an oval. It is the short axis of the oval to which the sutures must run parallel. Can you bend your wrist and let it go? Yeah, it's just, there's, no, there's no wound tension here. So I'm arbitrarily going to just... I mean, you could argue that it's, it's here. Yeah, okay. Grab the wound edge gently with the toothed forceps. Using non-toothed serrated forceps here will result in the needle to hold the wound edge tightly, thereby crushing it. Yeah, like here I'm very gentle and the, and the, and the, the hooks... The hooks, you see that close in? These hooks here? Yes. Yes? yes. Okay. They, ca they catch on the skin, and, and I don't have to be, I have to be just very gentle. Uh, if, if there was no hooks here, I kind of have to push really hard, and, and it still will slip, and you end up crushing the skin. Also, the wound edge will continually slip out of the forceps grasp, causing blood splash and frustration. Twist the wound edge towards the adjacent skin rather than toward the defect. Okay. Allow the needle to approach the skin perpendicularly. Yeah, so when you want to when you want to put a needle in, the needle wants to be perpendicular to the skin, okay? But this is look at my wrist and it's all uncomfortable, right? So the more natural position is where the needle is kind of facing towards me. So here I just bend the skin up, so now it's perpendicular that way. You can do this by br uh, twisting your wrist awkwardly toward the direction of your thumb, thereby bringing the needle to the natural position of the wound edge, or preferred method, by bringing the wound edge to the natural position of the needle, which is with palm facing the wound defect, hand perpendicular to the skin. Push the needle through the skin. In this case, rest your right fourth finger on the skin while pressing the needle through the skin. Okay, so check it out. Uh my my hand my hand has to be somewhere uh, you got to go uh, higher my hand has to be somewhere touching uh, the patient's body so if I were going to put a, a stitch in this way my my finger 
is going to be touching his skin so that I use very small muscles of, small muscles of my hand to, um, to push the needle through. Uh, if I just have my hand completely disconnected, dissociated from his body, so when I push and there's resistance, it's going to push and kind of, I have, I have very little control, it's going to push and fly forward too much. In this case, it's an awkward position, I can't put my hand on his arm, but I'm putting my wrist on, on, uh, on his body. And his wrist on his body is the same, is the same, it's the same resistance for me, so, so that's, that's why I'm doing that. Okay. This way, once the skin gives under the pressure of the needle, the needle does not penetrate beyond the skin out of control. Release the needle. Okay, so I release the needle. The needle point should be sticking out of the middle of the defect. Hold on. And it is. Achieve hemostasis with gauze, using an instrument to blot the gauze and not your fingers. Right, so here, uh, here, if it's, were this bleeding, uh, and, and there's a needle point here, if I just used my finger, uh, I'm going to stick myself. So you can't do that. So you just use gauze on the, on the forceps and blot. Okay. Grab the needle point with the needle driver. Pull the needle entirely through the center of the defect. Okay, now check it out. Look at what position of my wrist. Okay, the, the needle was in my hand this way. Okay, I'm going to twist my wrist. I'm going to twist my wrist before I grab the needle so that when I circulate it, circle it out, I, it, it, just in position to hand off at the blunt side of the needle. Okay. Grab the suture at the base of the needle with the needle point pointing away from your fingertips, i.e. in the same direction as your fingertips. You see the needle has to be pointing there. If the needle is pointing here, or worse yet, if it's pointing there, you're going to be asked to get stuck. So you just move that sucker back. Okay? Avoid letting the needle turn perpendicular in to your fingers, or worse, towards your fingers. Then release the needle point from the needle driver. Right. So uh, you go like that. And then like that, okay? Load the needle between your fingers and the needle. Now I twist my wrist back, okay, and load the needle driver again. And now I'm for ready for the next natural stroke. Go ahead. Grab the contralateral wound edge with the forceps. Twist the edge toward the skin and away from the defect. Okay, now some people like to keep the, this, the amount of string here very short, which is good because now it's automatically out of your way. Some people accidentally pull it that way and now it kind of gets in your way, in which case your assistant can just hold the string back out of your way while you continue, okay? Insert the needle as previously. So here again, I'm making it perpendicular to the needle again, okay? Push the needle through the skin. In this case, rest your right fourth finger on the skin while pressing the needle through the skin. This way, once the skin gives under the pressure of the needle, the needle does not penetrate beyond the skin out of control. Okay. Release the needle. Release. Grab the needle point with the needle driver. Okay. Pull the needle entirely through okay. the second wound edge. Grasp the blunt end of the needle with your left thumb and index. Again, okay. Such that the needle points away from your fingers, i.e. in the same direction as your fingertips. Now check it out. Now, uh, this is very short, okay? And the shorter it is, the better. So I, I want to now, I have two choices. You can see that I want to make a circle here with the wound, okay? Uh, I want it with the suture, um, where, the, where the wound is, is in the center of the circle. And I insert my needle driver in the center of that circle. Now, I can wrap the needle around the needle driver, but I don't like moving my hand with the needle, so I instead use the needle driver to make those identical motions, okay? Release the needle point from the needle driver. In doing this, you are in full control of the needle. If you let the needle dangle by securing the suture just proximal to the needle, the needle can stick you. For example, if there is inadvertent pulling of the suture, making the needle move towards your Okay, so that's, so that's an important point. Some people, uh, after they, after they um, pull that last stitch, they will grab the string instead of the needle itself and then do their thing. And I just don't like this because it's dangling around and it can like totally bite me. So rather than that, I, I, I like to hold the, I like to be in control of the viper's head all the time. Okay? Pull the suture such that there is one inch at the initial wound edge. Grab Two the, inches, one inch, whatever, okay. Grab the end of the suture with the needle driver. While holding the needle in the left index and thumb, spool the excess... Okay, so hold on, so we, so, so we skipped a step because that was a step we did. So first of all, you, you, you make the circle, okay? Once you make the circle, you pull the string all the way through. 
All right, you getting this, Jeffrey? Yeah. Okay. Now I'm gonna. Now we grab the end. We secure the end of this. Okay. And then and now I, I have too much string here, right? So look at my hand. It's it's all. It's like too far out, right? So instead, I I, I spool. I'm spooling the the string along my fingers once it, with three fingers. And then I can do two fingers or one finger; it doesn't matter. And now, in a very small space, I can cinch the, I can cinch the, uh, the knot. Um, if, let me just undo this for a second. If I went ahead, okay, and and uh, and spooled before before I secured the end of this, I, I could inadvertently pull this all the way through, and I'd have to redo the whole stitch. Okay. While holding the needle in the left index and thumb, spool the excess suture by placing your fifth finger on the same side of the suture as the concave side of the needle. Yeah, so you see, you see, you see the, the, the concave side of the needle is, the concave side of the needle is here, my fifth finger is here, so I'm going to put my finger towards there, and then around. Okay. Um, release the end of the suture from the needle driver. Imagine that if you connected the needle to the end of the suture, it would make a circle. Put the needle driver inside that circle. So, yes, and this is the circle, okay. Wrap the needle side of the suture around the needle driver two times in the direction of the end of the suture. Okay. An alternative way to do this is to move the needle driver, keeping the left thumb and index still, and spool the suture around the needle driver clockwise, keeping the needle driver as close to the left hand as possible. Once wrapped twice, Grab the end of the suture with the needle driver. Your hand should be uncrossed. Yeah, my hand is uncrossed now. Cross your hands to tie the knot. You should okay. see a square knot readily formed and settling down toward the wound defect as you tighten. Well, okay, so whether it's crossed or uncrossed depends on the initial position, but check it out. You see this nice square knot here? Yeah. And so it goes down. Now, this on purpose I did this. Look at how the wound edge is inverting on itself. It's inverting. Now, skin is touching skin. Okay, so this is a bad this is a bad suture, so you have to know when to undo it and redo it. Okay, so now I'm going to do a vertical a vertical mattress suture, which all all it is is you go far away and here's here's stitching in action. Okay, one you grab the forceps. Whether you're perpendicular in this case, honestly, it's it's not the biggest deal in the world, but here I hand off to myself, I readjust. Now I'm going near, near. Careful there. Mm -hmm. And one, hand off to myself, two, and now you're going to see it's going to, the dead space is now going to close up. So again, I hand off, I do the circle, okay, and here's the circle now. So I, I pull. Okay, I grab, I spool, and I verify where the square knot is. It's there. Okay, now I cinch down and check it out. Now it, it is, the wound is going to be everted. I don't have to, I don't have to put it down too hard. I don't have to s squeeze too hard here. Okay, go you ahead. You may see blood pooling in the wound defect while doing this. Before firmly tying the knot down, blot the pooled blood such that the firm completion of the knot does not cause a splash. Immediately secure the knot after the blot before new blood can accumulate. Yeah, so this wasn't bleeding, but were this bleeding, we would have blotted and then I would have secured the knot. If the wound does not appear to be closing readily, you can turn both your hands 90 degrees such that the suture ends are perpendicular to the loop of the stitch just sewn. Yeah, so I could turn this way or I can turn it perpendicular that way and squeeze more. And if I turn it perpendicular that way and squeeze more, it just it, it pulls the wound together much stronger. Pull your hands away from each other along the line of the surgical defect, i.e. perpendicular to the loop of the stitch. Release the suture end from the needle driver. Okay. Wrap the suture now only once around the needle driver or the needle driver around the suture so the needle moves towards the wound defect. Okay, now, now um, check, check it out. So uh, I don't have to unspool this in order to do this circle. So I can keep this all spooled and I'm just working with a shorter string here. So now I do the circle. Go ahead. Grab the suture end, causing your hands to cross. Now tie the knot by uncrossing your hands. Again, blot before securing the knot if blood is pooling. Yeah, so here I would blot and so just do it just for the sake of doing it. You blot 
And then you tie down. Okay. Throw and a third knot as you did the first one, but with only one spool. Okay. Okay. Continue to hold the end of the suture in the needle driver. Hold up both ends of the suture perpendicular to the wound. Okay. Cut the sutures, leaving about one centimeter. Okay. Leaving the tails too short makes it difficult to remove the sutures later on and runs the risk of the knots unraveling. Reload the needle driver. At this point, bleeding may still be brisk and you are holding a loaded needle driver, even if it means messy bleeding. Fight the instinct to blot at this point. Rather, first put down the loaded needle driver, then make a motion to blot. If you get temporarily uncoordinated or try to hold gauze and blot with the same hand that is holding the needle driver, you can stick your other hand. Yeah, so if I hold the gauze this way and, and blot, if like I don't have an assistant, then I can stick myself. So if you don't have an assistant, put this down. Well, go go ahead. Put this down. Uh, you grab the gauze and you blot, and then, or alternatively, I have again the gauze in the uh, in the forceps, and and then I can blot and and do what I need to do. Okay. Assuming you did a four millimeter punch and only require two sutures, grab the angle of the wound using one head of the forceps as a skin hook. Pull it away from the opposite angle of the wound, synonymously away from the first suture thrown. Okay. The wound edges naturally evert so that the needle can be placed perpendicularly to the wound edge. Allow the needle to penetrate both edges of the wound, coming clear out the other side rather than coming through the center of the defect. Okay. Tie the knot as above, but when pulling down the knot, sometimes you may have accidentally not been perfectly between the first suture and the angle of the wound. In this case, either pull the suture out completely through and retry, or allow the knot to fall where you intended, even though the entry and exit points of the suture are not where you intended. Okay, here. So now, like... If I didn't want to go exactly here, I can I can cinch it down here, or I can cinch it down here, or wherever I can. In this whole arc, do you see that? Yeah, I see it now. I can cinch it down here, or here, or wherever, and I'm gonna go where I intended it to go. And I'm not doing it too tight, but just just enough where it's together. Okay, so that's one. And now I'll finish this knot. Go ahead, read. In. Cut the suture as above. Okay. To determine if you need an extra stitch, wait about 10 seconds. If you have not achieved hemostasis, likely you could use another stitch, or perhaps place a pressure dressing. Also, be sure all wound edges are firmly touching each other. Sometimes the ends of the sutures get stuck under the knots. Pick out the suture ends from underneath the knots. Doing so allows you to grab them in two weeks when it is time for suture removal. Otherwise, they get buried in the serosanguineous crust of the wound. Clean the wound with reasonable friction to remove dried blood using hydrogen peroxide soaked gauze. Apply yeah. wound dressing. I like bacitracin ointment and a band-aid. Okay, so here we've achieved uh, here we've achieved hemostasis and wound closure. Cut. And uh, I don't think we're going to need any other stitch because there's not much bleeding and these dog ears will settle out uh, once the stitches are removed in two weeks. Okay, we're done.